Okay, today's going to be a challenge. I've got to really focus. Turn off the radio shows, maybe a little light classical music, but I have to really focus and work fast today. I have much of the structure of this wing, the, the tempo figured out. I want the feathers bunched up and uh, <clears throat> fluffing into each other. And um, so the, the, the structure is there, the movement's there. So basically I'm just uh, sticking the feathers in, um, being very careful and precise as to the overall shapes of the feathers, their dimensions and positions and um, trying to make it as interesting as possible but working as quickly as I can now. If you notice I keep my blob of clay on the wing there. If you hold it it'll tend to dry out. Sometimes you need it a little drier but at this stage I need it as malleable as possible. So I'm using a wetter clay at this point. Now I'm working in this area of these secondary flights and there's two they're two parallel. Later on you'll see that I I change the tempo and the pace so that they're not so evenly broke so they're not so evenly broken up. You need to have them uh, repetition with variation. Notice I start to stand back and I look at it. I could probably immediately see those three feathers. Nope. I'm looking at something else. I will find those three feathers. I'll have to fix it and make it more interesting. You, you stay up close and your work suffers. You have to constantly move back and forth from your work. So I rough the feathers up with a large clay tool, like a two and a half inch clay tool. Then I went in and went in with a finer rake clay tool. And now I'm coming in and precisely cutting in with a um, an aluminum ceramic spatula. I'm also using a two and a half inch clay tool and a one inch fine <coughs> rake as well as a wooden uh, clay tool. Again I want to emphasize how important it is to look at the spaces around the sculpture and I want to re-emphasize that there's no such thing as negative shape, it, uh, negative space. There's negative shape but not negative space. It's space and solid, positive shape, negative shape, form and void. So perhaps we should use the terms looking at the form and voids. Aha! See how I fixed those feathers? Variation and repetition and variation. Now it's looking more interesting. Okay, I've really got the lights flooded. I've got the fluorescence on overhead and I've got lights on the left and on the right. So <clears throat> I'm trying to move my eye around as quickly as possible by flooding the area with light. I'm really putting in the effort to finish up, finish up this front side so I can get around to the back side. I want to get both backside wings uh, done. This is looking a lot better. Notice I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to the hands and to the human form. They're just kind of sitting there. They'll definitely be fixed. Um, that's not what they're going to look like. There's no reason to spend any time because they're just going to get bumped around. That's that's the dessert. That's the icing on the cake. That's what makes it all worthwhile. <clears throat> but right now I'm going. I'm forging away with my frustrations with the wings and. Today it's not such a frustration, not such a frustration, it's much more interesting now. Much more Italian-esque. Those hands really look awful. I hate to see things like that, but... So notice, as I start getting into a little more detail, I knock out the fluorescent lights, but I still have two lights 
overhead which gives me enough light I need <clears throat> just cleaning up a little of those subtle shapes that I'm going after with the dimmed lights I can see the shapes much better and as I refine it further down I go to one light source I may move the light source around a bit but to really see I like to control my lights well I'm now to the back side I've got full fluorescence notice I'm scribing the direction that I'm going to lay in the feathers rotating them that's what that scribe line is I have two lights overhead and all fluorescence going now using this line to offset it lines in na nature tend to spiral so that's why I'm putting on a spiral I'll also make these uh, uh, little fluffy feathers much more interesting little coverts the final line on the right I start laying in the clay now remember repetition and variation Vary it, make it interesting for the viewer to to look at. So at this point I'm trying to speed along and it's more method than anything else. I lay, I thumb in the clay, then I go in with a little Bondo scraper, plastic Bondo scraper that I've cut down with a razor blade. And that'll bring it in rough, give me the rough shape. Then I go in with a smooth with a, a, a fine rake and then after the rake I'll use the uh, aluminum spatula I'm looking at the front as well as the back getting the uh, position of the feathers and getting the alignment and direction again using the little bondo scraper using the big two inch tool really get the get the direction the photo is a little washed out now but to get the direction of the clay uh, is really important the direction of the feather from t uh, tip to tail of the feather is a different shape than on the front of the wing if you were to sculpt a feather, a wing as it would be, it would be flat because all the curves uh, <clears throat> fill all the voids of the wing in actuality and the wing would be flat. So this is all stylization. Now I have a couple of feathers stuck in the wing to give me primary flights, secondary flights. And give me a sense of um, just a gaze just to get a sense of feather and putting the incense on just to possibly calm my nerves it's nice to 
work with all your senses, sense of sight and touch, but you can also sculpt with your nose. So sometimes you can heighten your awareness by uh, changing your environment. That's why I have the incense makes my heightens my sense of awareness with all my senses. <clears throat> you know, double tasking is an interesting concept because we have our five senses, or six if we count the mind, and they're all working either with each other or against each other. With the mind, I would say that they're working against each other you get distracted with a scent, and you get distracted with a touch, a glance, a sound. But to get your senses to work in unity and harmony is is the trick. And I, I cannot overemphasize that enough at how to get all the senses working in union. <clears throat> we sometimes can do very few things with if we're lucky we can play the piano with two hands um, if you're an organist you can use your hands and your feet but what kind of problems does it add when we use our hands our, our feet our stance I just think it's very important to try and unify your mind and trust, tr there's another sense, to trust your sense of intuition. What feels good, what feels good at this point. I'm never surprised, I'm always very happily, well, I am surprised in a sense, but I, it, it's a discovery that I can't take credit for, but when some, when things turn out right, and nice it, it is it is a pleasant surprise and it comes from trusting your intuition now the wing I'm working on has got all this interesting stuff going on and it has to be working in concert with what's going on in the front of the wing it can't be separate it has to be tied into the, the movement and that's what's going to make the back interesting I the the one thing I found kind of disappointing was some of the um, uh, great 18th century uh, cemetery statues in Staliano is the all the attention was put on the front of the wing and you go to the back of the wing and it looks like the the master gave it to the apprentice to finish up the backs of the wings very very uh, poor detail. Just very little attention was paid to the, the, those wings. I guess uh, why spend all that kind of time if uh, nobody's going to be viewing it. But somehow, to me, I'd like to have everything finished up interesting so it can be, you can walk around it. But it, 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 if it's going to be up against a, an architrave or some sort of a facade, then there's not much use to spending a great deal of time on it at that point. My mind is going about 90 miles an hour really playing with this making it exciting With waterbound clay, you keep it moist. I'm using a two-gallon garden sprayer, uh, spraying. Keep just keeping it moist. If you keep your clay moist, you'll be fine. You can't get it too moist, but if it if it starts drying out, there's no rescuing it. You're going to have to just replace the dried areas because if you start uh, trying to reabsorb the clay, it'll just crack and break off. So. Um, that's learned the hard way. So keep your clay moist all the time. Uh, don't allow it to dry out. Uh, at the end of the day, I always wrap it with um, rags and then coat coated in plastic. Now back to working. 
Well, I've got the directions of the planes worked out. Now you can see a few lines scribed for laying in the feathers. I'll soon need to be looking at the front of the wing. But for right now I'm just laying it in. Not very interesting looking at my back. It's important to change the direction. One of the best tools in your arsenal is your are your hands. Your hands are a great tool. I'm going in with my method again. Cutting in with the rake, the fine rake, and then I'll go over it with the uh, aluminum spatula. Now with the way I have it set up in my studio, I can put lights anywhere in any position overhead. I'm going to need a third light in a different shining on the front of the wing so I can use that as a reference. And that plug's a little tall for a short guy like me. There we go. Use a uh, it's six <coughs> use a little clamp from Harbor Freight. Get that cord out of the way. There we go. Now let's take a look at it. Okay, it's a good idea to sit and look at your work before working. You know, I see in drawing classes and painting classes, oftentimes the model gets in front of the student and immediately everybody in the room starts drawing frantically. It's always best if you have a model in front of you to take a few minutes and see how you're going to work it before just frantically going to it. Again, it's a very dry day so I've got to see about wetting the, this sculpture. Now the capillary action in the clay will always draw the water down. Gravity will pull the water down. So the most important parts are going to be the head, the tops of the wings, where the water will want to drain out. Just be cognizant. Wetting it down will also help the new clay adhere to it better. It's like stucco. And it's very difficult to see the nuances of the uh, model of the backs of the wings because the light's so flat but there's a lot of curvature going on. Now I'm going to start having a lot of fun with those little feathers playing around because that <coughs> front primary covert's being held by her and pulling up underneath the wing so this is what's causing all that disruption of the feathers. I just play with the front and the back. It seems I'm probably want running into a little bit of wire there um, I use that heavy duty construction wire and it's really um, tough stuff and I'm going to need to move it around here in a minute yeah I'm pressing in with my finger fingers not good enough there we go take the hammer to it push it in we're just pushing back that construction wire. Nothing real structural. It just holds everything. Don't ever let a 
there's no excuse for not getting the shape that you want. Always get the shape that you want no matter how much work it takes. If you compromise on one thing then you're going to compromise on another and another and another and then you just you have nothing to look at if you compromise. So take the time, get the shapes. the movements. I'm totally engrossed with the movement. I'm out of time. I don't know what time doesn't exist for me at this point. This is interesting shapes being achieved. Stand back, see repetition and variation. Now we got some interesting shapes. I'm going to run out of uh, memory card here pretty soon, or batteries, and so unfortunately I don't have a, I won't have a good um, single source light that you can see all the movement that's going on today. We always have tomorrow. And the temptation is to sit down. Once you, you lock your feet in, then you lock your mind. always standing back and going forward it's a very now see how those those directions of those feathers underneath are changing direction it's all messed up there because she's got her wing being pulled around that's what makes it fun <laughs>